Meanwhile, in Italy, my mother's family was growing. In 1950, Robertino was born. Two years later, my mother gave birth to twin girls, Isabella and Ingrid. You know, when you're a child, you think that it's like a story. You think everybody has control and they can make up their mind about their destiny and say, well, you did this wrong and you did this right and I... Yeah, but life isn't like that. As you get older, particularly after you have your own children, then you become able to say, oh, oh, it's more complicated. Now I begin to understand. Now I understand why marriages fail. Now I understand why people don't get along with their children. Now I understand why there are absences or their presence or their difficulties. As a child, you can't see that. It didn't hurt me that the fact that my mother wasn't there every day. In fact, I kind of liked it because I was very noisy. And when mother and father were at home, they they'd always told us to shut up because they were on the phone or they were reading something. So when they were gone, I could house was mine. I could make as much noise as I wanted. So I didn't mind them coming and going because I liked their affection and I never felt that I wasn't loved. I think it had been a little bit hard on my sister Ingrid who, who maybe has a little bit of mother's character. She was, She's a little more shy and I think it had been very hard for Pia who was prevented to see her from years because, because of the divorce with Peter. But that was a kind of a, a bulldog. So I really didn't need their presence every day. When I was um, about 12 or 13 year old, that found out that I had a deformity on the spine called a scoliosis that needed to be operated. And at the time, it was a major operation and I'd been in a cast and immobilized in bed. I was sick for about two years, of which a year and a half in a cast. And uh, my mother stopped working and was at my site all the time. My father was a total avant-garde artist. The only thing that interested him was to forward a media. Instead, for my mother was, if you want, more the establishment, but by that I don't mean anything negative, more take a theme and develop it until you master it. No, if I went back home, I would save neither myself nor the others. But the avant-garde thing, it's a hard way of life. There's no money, there is always danger, there is always uh, bad reviews. Um, and I think she could not sustain the kind of attack that came not only with the scandal, but even with the unsuccess fil films that they had done. Only when you're completely free are you at peace with the community. Those who are bound to nothing are bound to everybody. When Roberto was having a particularly difficult time raising money for a new film, he decided to direct Ingrid in a touring production of Honegger's Joan of Arc at the Stake. The entire Rossellini family toured the capitals of Europe. The project was not a financial success. For years, Roberto had been very possessive. He refused to consider that Ingrid might work with another director. Finally, he did agree. And my mother went to France to make Paris Does Strange Things with director Jean Renoir. But the picture that was to return Ingrid to triumph and eventually back to America was yet to come. Anastasia. My mother won more than her second Academy Award with Anastasia. As her old movie self, defenseless and vulnerable, she regained the affection of the American public. Anna! Anna, I am I Anna? Why not Tamara or Lisa? Why not Tatiana? Yes, why not Tatiana? No, I don't want this. I want to be me. I'm, whoever I am, I want to be me. I want someone to tell me, someone to accept me, someone... After the absence of seven years, she returned to New York to receive an award for Anastasia. Despite the intense questioning by the press, 
My mother had no apologies. Miss Bergman, did you have any uh, criticism of the way the press in general handled the story of your life in the past year? Oh, sure, I had some criticism of it, because I think the person has to have a private life, but I also know that if you choose being an actress, you have to take both sides of the coin. So, there it is. Looking back on it, uh, do you have any regrets about anything that you've done in the last few years, uh, Miss Bergman? No, I have no regrets at all. I regret the things I didn't do. Uh, Not what I did. So <laughs> well, I got a list of some of those? <laughs> no. Well, oh, I think my life has been wonderful because I have never, I have, um, well, I have, I have done what I, what I, what I felt like. I have never, I, I, I was given courage and I was given a sense of adventure and that has carried me along. And then also with a sense of humor and a, a little bit of common sense, it has been a very rich life. My mother asked me not to visit her in New York, but suggested that I fly to Paris the following summer. I was 18 then and could make my own decisions. Afterwards, we went to Italy, and that summer, my mother had all her children with her for the first time. I enjoyed the idea of having this big kind of family that would be all together with lots of, of half siblings and that we could all get together and you know we really could and Pia came and became incredibly fond of my father um, and lived with us and to us he was fantastic because we were very Italian kids you know um, America was still very far in the 50s when we grew up and to have this fantastic American sister blonde wearing pants that was a big deal in Italy in the 50s doing sports horseback riding, skiing. I showed her off like crazy at school. Although it's wonderful to have a parent around, you can be raised without having a parent around every minute, you realize later. I think all of us children realize the things she had to contend with. The forces in her life, the call to perform, her need to be in a contented family, which was on the set. I remember when she used to come to Italy, when I was living in Italy there. She would come from France to see how things were going on, and she would come in, and of course, when you've been away and you come home, the people who are there say, oh, this is broken, and that's broken, you've got to fix this, you've got to pay for that. Well, my mother would last for about six hours with this. And she would say, I have to leave, I just, I can't take it. I think that the guilt toward the, the, the four of us children wasn't so much that she was an actress and she was working, but it was how could she avoid, she could have avoided fighting with Peter, Pia's father, my father, um, and how this fight became incredibly violent. My mother and Roberto Rossellini had made five films together. None had been financially successful. After seven years and the birth of three children, their marriage had come to an end, when Roberto fell in love with another woman, and she had his child. She wondered if there was anything that she could have done differently to keep at peace the rage of, 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 of the fathers. In Paris, my mother's agent, Kay Brown, introduced her to a fellow Swede, Lars Schmidt, a theatrical producer. He was to be her third husband. Another divorce and another custody fight ended with my mother's younger children remaining in Italy with Roberto's family. My mother settled in France with her new husband. Once again, she lived in a different country than her children. I never heard my mother say that she thought her years in Italy were tragic in any way. I don't think she thought that. It certainly might seem that way if people were just looking at her career and saying, well, what happened to the career? Uh, well, her American career ended. But you know, when she was in Italy, she was making movies there with Roberto. They were working. And I think her life was exciting. I think she thought it was exciting, and I never heard her say she thought it was anything but. It was a wonderful time for my mother, a new marriage and a renewed career frequently acting in plays and television dramas produced by Lars. There would be profound changes in the years ahead, but her need to act 
That would never change. <laughs>